hi everyone so welcome to another video where i'm going to teach you motherboard integrated circuits so upon completion of this course you will be able to identify any integrated circuit in any motherboard so we gonna study all integrated circuits that you can find in any motherboard so let's get started but please before we dive in into the course make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated for future videos like this one so we gonna study four motherboards in this course in order to go deeper into understanding motherboard integrated circuits so let's take first this motherboard so we have here a motherboard as you can see for hp so this is basically here the input voltage for the motherboard here we have the power jack connector so i'm going to teach you how to locate and to identify any any integrated circuits in the motherboard for example here basically we have the DC connector and we have the battery connector. Means the integrated circuit that we gonna find here should be the charge IC. Okay? And near to it, we gonna find the 3 volt, 5 volt control IC. So let's see the back of this motherboard as you can see here. So basically here we have the charge IC. Do you see? This is the charge IC. Why? As you can see, because over here, as you can see, we have the DC connector. Okay? And the battery over here. And in the back of these two inductors, as you can see, we have basically, as you can see, this IC. Do you see? We have this IC. It means this is 3 volt, 5 volt control IC. Why? Because always near or usually near to the charge IC, you can't find 3 volt and 5 volt circuit. And of course, to be sure, you can just look here, as you can see, we have two inductors. This inductor is for 5 volt channel and this one is for 3 volt channel. Okay, and of course, near to each inductor, you will find MOSFETs and capacitors. So this I see basically, this is the BIOS, the basic input output system. Okay, so let's move on here. So here, as you can see, we have the CPU or the processor. This is the processor circuit, as you can see, where we have two inductors, MOSFETs, ceramic capacitors and and in the other side we should find capacitors it could be electrolytic capacitor or tantalum capacitor as you can see so this is basically the back of the processor as you can see okay so here we have basically the processor circuit so where is the ic we don't have ic here if we go back as you can see over here we have the IC. This is the processor, the back for the processor. And we have the control IC, the CPU control IC, as you can see. And over here, we have another IC, as you can see here. This IC, basically, if we go here, so let's see here, as you can see, we have inductor, capacitor, MOSFETs. Always when you find inductor, means you have a circuit. Here we have inductor means this is circuit. Here we have inductors, CPU circuit. Here we have inductors, this is 3 volt, 5 volt circuit. Here we have inductors, as you can see, this is basically the charge IC circuit, etc. So for this inductor, for this circuit, this is basically the RAM, as you can see, RAM circuit over here. This is RAM circuit. That's why in the back here, in the back, we have this IC, as you can see. The RAM control IC that provide the RAM for two voltages. So the main voltage, it could be 1.8 volt or 1.5 volt, depending on the type of the RAM. So if you want to know exactly the voltage provided by this IC, 
we can just go here as you can see over here this is basically the RAM slot if you focus here so let's zoom a little bit as you can see we have here 1.5 volt do you see we have here 1.5 volt 1.5 volt means this is the DDR3 okay because depending on the type of RAM the voltage is changed so for DDR1 the old RAM the voltage is 2.5 volts DDR2 the voltage is 1.8 volts DDR3 like as we have here the voltage is 1.5 volts DDR4 the voltage is 1.2 volts and for DDR5 a very enhanced and improved RAM the voltage is 1.1 volts then as you can see you can find this kind of IC no, near to which you will find an oscillator as you can see we have Y2 this is basically the clock generator IC this IC basically has as a purpose to generate the clock or the timing for the whole motherboard because without the clock the motherboard cannot work properly okay so the clock or timing synchronize the work between all these components okay then as you can see you can find this kind of IC this is basically a very important IC this is is IO or super IO this is basically the IC that is responsible for the whole power in the motherboard if you have any problem with the power in the motherboard means this is the responsible near to it we have the BIOS you will find usually the BIOS near the SIO or the ICH do you see here the clock generator always next to the clock generator you will find an oscillator X2 or Y2 and over here we have as you can see its value in megahertz 14.318 megahertz and here as you can see we have the audio control IC this is basically the audio the IC that is responsible for these connectors okay so if you have any problem with any connector these connectors basically or ports means you have problem with this IC you should check it and over here you will find always ceramic capacitors around any IC okay so if you want to check for example whether the IC is good or not is shorted or not you can just check the ceramic capacitors so these ceramic capacitors are shorted to the ground in just one side and connected to the IC in the other side so if you, if you find a shorted capacitor in both sides it could be the IC that is failed or the capacitor that is failed and as you can see for this kind of IC you will find always this kind of IC in the motherboard it is the responsible for this port as you can see the port the RG45 port so this IC is the control for this port if you have any faults with this port you should go and check this IC especially it's been out is it soldered correctly to the motherboard or not as you can see here also we have rg45 we have this ic also in this motherboard as you can see always this ic as you can see with 12 pin is the responsible for rg45 so for this motherboard as you can see for example we have the battery connector over here and we have this IC over here as you can see means this IC is the charge IC or the changer IC because it is next to the battery connector so this is how you can know the IC here for example also we have the processor this is basically the back of the processor we have the CPU control IC for this motherboard also as you can see do you see we have here the DC connector as you can see here this is basically the DC connector connected to the power jack via this cable 
here we have the battery connector or here we have the charge base okay then we have the super io then we have this ic next to two inductors you see inductor capacitor inductor capacitor this is 3.3 volt circuit here we have 5 volt circuit means this ic is the 3 volt 5 volt control ic okay if for example 3 volt or 5 volt are missing you should check this ic okay so this is how you can identify any integrated circuit in any motherboard okay without the schematic if you know this technique you can identify any integrated circuit without looking to its reference is it charge ic is it 3.3 volt 5 volt control ic cpu ic chipsets control ic's audio control ic etc so i hope that you understand a little bit and please don't forget to subscribe like the video because your likes really motivate me to create more and more videos for you and for anyone who want to join me in my patreon page or in the membership community in my youtube channel you are very welcome thank you very much and see you in the next video